Let's welcome in our next guest, our Sri Shankar of Prabhudas Tilathar is uh, now joining us. Sri, could you just tell us about uh, the markets at 9200? Are the risk uh, to buy from here on uh, much higher because the valuations uh, are, are not particularly cheap? I think, um, uh, yes, you are uh, absolutely right. No, I don't think the valuations are very cheap, but uh, the momentum is there. The FIA buying continues to be strong. The DIS continues to still remain bias. So um, uh, uh, a lot of things uh, uh, favor right now. And emerging markets uh, being in the negative territory for better part of the last three months of the last uh, calendar year uh, has turned out to be a positive factor as well. So I think... Um, as long as we continue to see this positive flow of money into emerging markets, you know, uh, and, and the DAS continues to stay strong in flows, uh, the chances are that the market will become more and more expensive. Uh, um, that also tells you that the, the kind of risk that you get into your portfolio, uh, if you're going to enter new stocks, is also going to be remaining high. Now, uh, having said that, uh, what we would like uh, uh, to recommend is, you know, we stay on. Uh, and stay, stay with the stocks that you are more comfortable with and where the fundamentals are uh, pretty remaining strong. Where, because of it, even if correction happens, correction will obviously will affect these stocks as well. But you are not going to see uh, yourself in some of the stocks where uh, probably the fundamentals doesn't warrant these kind of prices today. Right. Can you talk to us about FI18 estimates? Are they optimistic or do you think they are realistic for the street? I think uh, from our estimates right now, uh, even every analyst has given his, their estimates, when we work it out, my general feeling is that FI18 estimates is still a bit aggressive. We have uh, uh, roughly around 506 rupees earnings for the Nifty for FI, FI18. If I go back and analyze that FI18 earnings, a uh, significant amount of earnings growth has to come from two sectors, which is automobiles, mainly contributed by Tata Motors, and uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, banking. Banking and uh, um, uh, automobiles contribute closer to 44% of the Nifty's weightage. So if you have a 44% of the Nifty's weightage contributing in excess of 33% each in, in terms of an earnings growth, you have an earnings growth for this uh, Nifty to be extremely positive and quite strong. So the risk is if these earnings growth for these two sectors starts getting affected, banking especially, if you don't see resolutions coming in, your provisioning will increase and thereby your net profit growth will actually slow down. And that's a big risk that you are running. Um, and again, in automobiles, if something happens to uh, that automobile's earnings growth, then your earnings growth for the Nifty actually comes down quite dramatically. That's the key point that one needs to look at it. The second part is, again, uh, in the Nifty itself, it's probably you still will continue to have a solid growth coming from, or rather you may not see large slippages coming from banks like HDFC Bank, Kotak, uh, Indusind, and uh, etc., which constitute a, a, a larger part of the weightage out there. Whereas Axis and ICICA continue to have their own share of problems, and from their watch list you, you still expect to see slippages coming in. So I'm not saying that no. Uh, um, you, one needs to be extremely negative. What I'm saying is one needs to be cautious of these facts, that this is where we are and uh, the issue is going to come up from there. Right. Can you just tell us that private banks which have been leading the earnings growth so far, will they continue to do so in FI18? Yeah, no, I just mentioned the name of those private banks, you know, HDFC, Indescent, Kotak, uh, PS Bank, and all these things will continue to lead the earnings growth. So uh, we do not see any kind of a let up coming from an earnings growth uh, for these banks and it will continue to grow. But probably what is interesting to note is uh, many of the, uh, the, the banking system itself, which used to grow at around 10% plus till September, the, the credit growth has moderated down and has slowed down to around 3.5%. So in general, the bigger hit has been taken by PSU banks, which has actually not grown or actually degrowing in their credit book. So the bigger problem will actually happen for PSU banks. Um, the, probably the only exception there is SBI. SBI from their 10-11% growth and growth, they also slowed down, but they're still above the industry growth estimates. So the bigger gainers are the private sector banks, while the PSU banks end up being the losers. 
Can you talk about the metal prices? You think markets are now factoring in metal prices to stay where they are, which also is a risk? See, I would rather look at the commodity space per se, metals being one of the commodities. You know, you have metals one, one pay, then you've got crude on the other side. Especially in metals, more than the demand growth, what has happened, it's more of shutting of capacities, which has actually resulted in the price increase in prices. And our metal analyst believes that uh, uh, the, the increase that you have seen, you know, uh, probably even in the current quarter, where the demand has slowed down, but the saving grace has been the large amount of exports, especially in steel, which has kept the prices up and uh, the companies being able to report better performances when, uh, on a year-on-year -year basis and what, what has been happening earlier. So uh, it's a case wherein where the, the shutdown of capacities have resulted in actually the prices increasing. But again, metals is not going to make much of a change in the overall system because they are uh, a minuscule part of the nifty. Right. As far as uh, emerging market flows are concerned, emerging market flows have started to be positive, at least for the last two months. Uh, do you think that with what happened with Fed, uh, you know, maybe a lot of events this year, but do you believe that the flows would continue to be positive? I think for the moment, you know, Fed hack, uh, the rate hack has been discounted. That's why our assessment. So what will go happen going forward if you continue to see uh, increases? That's a function of how the inflationary outlook happens, what is the growth in terms of an economy uh, over there, etc. So now, for the time being, the first phase is over. You were uh, you anticipating a rise, and that rise has happened. And the, you know, even after this, if you continue to see strong numbers in terms of job, uh, non-farm job additions, inflation, etc., then probably the monetary policies will need to have a relook yet again. So which effectively means that even in markets like India, uh, where even the inflation numbers which has come about, which probably has uh, uh, been on the higher side than what has been anticipated. So the cautionary uh, um, message that RBA has been giving through their communication in terms of uh, the <coughs> policy matters still holds good. So one needs to look at these two in not in isolation but more in conjunction. So if you continue to see this uh, increase happens, then inflationary pressures also should lead to uh, uh, firmer prices and commodities. It, right now, that doesn't look like the case, at least in the, uh, 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 in, the, in the crude side. Crude has been stable after the increase hike. So we'll have to wait and watch as it comes through. <coughs> right, uh, can you just tell us uh, what is your uh, client's view post uh, the UP election and the Fed? Uh, then they are not much worried about valuation because it provides stabilities for flow as well as uh, stability for uh, government. See, the whole issue is that a lot of investors are getting, and the institutional investors are getting flows. When the, they, they get the flows, now they need to deploy the flows into the markets. So even if many of them are becoming expensive, etc., their mandate is to get invested. So the money has to find homes. So it has to get invested somewhere So in the, in the equity market per se. And that would continue to lead the market, uh, keep the market maintain its momentum. But our own assessment is probably it will go to around 9300 levels, etc. After that, uh, you probably would start to see some profit booking. Right. Uh, what do you do with sectors that have not performed? Do you think that's the space to be in? So IT, large cap pharma, uh, maybe PSU banks, the things that you pointed out. So underweight sectors are the sectors to be in. At least downside seems to be limited. Um, See, the, this is uh, whether downside is uh, uh, limited is a relative question. The, the <coughs> many of these sectors have not seen an investment, um, a large amount of investment from investors for sp some specific reasons. If we take IT, we had a theme report which we had come out with. In the theme report, we have categorically mentioned why we think that this will not happen in a hurry. Uh, why we think that uh, the Indian companies are uh, actually mm, not in a very fascinating kind of an investment horizon because of the wrong capital allocation. If you start to see these changes, the so buybacks being offered, etc., and uh, ROE is improving, and acquisitions which will be value accretive, margin accretive, um, and ROE accretive for these companies, then the valuation of these companies may change. But till the time that happens, probably I do not see ex these things to have an extremely higher valuation. Having said that, if all other sectors keep running up to that extent, 
it is but natural that you will see some of these sectors which are a proud not participated in the rally still you have certain earnings etc will get into the <coughs> mode of an investment horizon and these markets will keep moving up along with it <coughs> sorry the point uh, about uh, you know very strong liquidity in the market you know can other underperforming stocks also do well was that quite visible with the, the dmart ipo the sort of response that it got I think DMART IPO, the response that it has got is again, from our viewpoint, it's a uh, it, it, it's a it's a different business model that the company has, and that has been proved successful so far. So that's that. Uh, if you look at the entire uh, <coughs> sorry, retail uh, space, the retail spectrum, the this company has been an exception. So that's the kind of a support it has got. Right. Uh, Shri, if you want to have water, you can have water. We can do markets till then. So if I just look at the markets and what essentially is uh, happening on the top gaining side, uh, in terms of Nifty, Adani Ports is now the top gain at 322. If I look at Adani Port, the year high is 323. It's also the day's high. So it's almost at a life high for Adani Ports. Very, very strong move, 323. Tata Steel is up 2.6 odd percent. Indalco is doing well. So you have big commodity names that are doing well. Commodity, uh, underlying commodity I'm talking about, did very, very well uh, overnight. So you have Tata Steel, which is up 2.6. Hindalco, which is doing very, very well. Some of the other commodity names are also doing well. Orbindo Pharma is up about 2 odd percent. That's a name which is uh, doing well. Again, it's been an underperforming name. So maybe it's playing a catch up role. Indescent Bank is up close to about 2 odd percent. And Asian Paints, HCL Tech, Tata Motors, DVR are some of the other names that are doing well. Even broader market are doing well so if I just look at the gaining list on the broader market size with volumes Suzlon is a name uh, which has gone up in the last few minutes so Suzlon is up close to about eight odd percent very very strong move for Suzlon Jindal Polyflims no news flow that I can pick up but it's up 15 percent very strong volumes of 1.3 million shares uh, very rarely you see such high price action into this name Patel Engineering is up uh, close to about 8 odd percent. Nathan Fire Protection is up 7 percent. So most of the names actually seem to be doing well. TCI Express is up about 8 odd percent. Shri, in terms of uh, the DMART IPO and uh, the response that it has got, yep. uh, do you think that uh, you know markets are searching for new ideas? So you have a new sector, you have a high growing company within that new sector and you just see such fabulous response which was also seen for Interglobe Aviation earlier? Uh, then, uh, again, you know, um, um, obviously when the markets are at a new high, it's very difficult to find uh, stocks with value. It will be more growth stories. So the DMART IPO is a classic case where it is more of a growth story. Um, and Pankaj, I didn't get you the question about airlines. Can you come back? Right. So I was just saying the point that, you know, we have seen in airlines, how Interglobe Aviation got a response despite sector not being in uh, uh, favor. Uh, is that something which we can also assume for DMART IPO and what it can do to the retail sector? Um, DMART IPO, I, IPO, what it has done to the retail sector, and their retail sector has got a re-rating. Obviously, um, uh, DMART IPO would definitely help the entire retail sector in terms of an outlook. And uh, I would also think that the market, the, the new IPOs, will the valuations will be more expensive. Having said that, our view, we had uh, spiced it in our topics, which we removed from our topics because we think the kind of capacity additions right now that we are seeing in the Indian market probably was resulting in the yields not going up. So I, we don't think that in the near term, uh, you're uh, likely to see a large amount of profitability increase in the airline industry uh, in, the, in the country, though the demand is continuing to uh, be remaining strong in terms of passenger edition every year. So uh, it's a question wherein uh, when the yields will move up and uh, we don't think that it's not going to happen in a hurry. So what are your top picks at the current level? Uh, with valuations being where they are, what would you want to buy? We still continue with our top picks, the only exception being that uh, um, uh, we uh, uh, we had removed earlier Bharat Force from our topics and uh, we will we'll continue to like HDFC Bank as I said, uh, Indescent Bank, Kotak Mahindra, SBI is only one among the PSU banks that we are extremely bullish of and the, for this precise reason that the operating profit growth or pre-provisioning operating profit growth of SBI is far higher than uh, the kind of 
uh, uh, slippages that uh, SBA has. So, uh, uh, which effectively means that even for provisioning coverage, it's not any going to be an issue for SBA. So, uh, we continue to stick to our topics, um, and we are, uh, we we believe that these are the stocks that GIOs uh, continue to show a stronger growth and stronger momentum. Right. For SBI, do you think markets is also looking at the subsidiary valuation, that's uh, the SBI life valuation with what's happening in insurance space, that makes it look even cheaper? I don't think so. I don't think that uh, mm, SBI life is going to add much to the valuation of SBI at this stage. But obviously, even if, if everybody looks at SBI, they look into SBI life valuation also. Right. Uh, in terms of PSU banks, say if SBI has to do well or Bank of Baroda or any other large cap banks, do you think that uh, resolution to NPA is the key rather than growth in corporate loans? I think our belief is that resolutions to NPA is not going to be very easy. So the, the issue with PSU banks is going to be, or PSU banks for that matter, any bank which has got large amount of NPAs or increasing NPAs, is that if you do not see resolutions on some of these NPAs which have slipped in last year. Remember one thing, you know, we had seen the AQR slippages happening from 3Q of FI60. That's the December quarter. So December would have had. Now with the December being over, December 16 being over, most banks would have completed one year of being that in NPA. Now the bucket will change in terms of a provisioning. So you, they, they all need to do a re-evaluation of it. As these NPAs ages, their provisioning requirement also will go up. So if you don't find resolutions for these NPAs, you know, you continue to need to provide for it. So the question here is, uh, how much of incremental slippages are we going to see? The good thing about uh, is many of the banks have actually started seeing a deceleration in the incremental slippages of uh, NPA. Now, if that continues, it's well and good. If it doesn't continue, the problem is going to be that you are going to see an increase in NPS at the same time aging of the old NPS, which requires you to provide more. That will wipe away most of the profits these banks will generate. So which will continue to be a bigger problem for these PSU banks. And that's the reason why I don't think investors will come in a hurry to invest into these banks. And if that doesn't happen, when I say that doesn't happen, the incremental slippages doesn't happen, it's well and good. Right, uh, Shri, as far as uh, contra bets are concerned, do you think real estate and telecom are contra bets in the market? Recently, there has been a lot of interest into these sectors. I think uh, um, people have anticipated a lot of positives coming from real estate companies, uh, uh, probably from uh, the way the things have uh, expected to deliver. But once RERA comes, when more organized uh, real estate companies will see the benefits from uh, single uh, developers or smaller developers where regulatory requirements will go up in terms of that will probably add to costs. So our belief is that organized uh, real estate development will continue to do well. And having said that, um, I think uh, if real estate is also doing an also run, that's not the way to look at it. Look at the uh, established players, what's the kind of a growth prospect that they have and then you need to look at it. That's number one. Number two, because the market has gone up, real estate will also go up. So that's going to be something completely different. Second is on telecom. I think what is applicable to airline is applicable to telecom also. Increased capacity, increased offerings, is a customer is a king. The profitability of these <coughs> operators will get impacted. So in the near term, we don't see much of a positive even for the telecom side. Unless significantly ARPUs keep going up and so on and so forth. Shri, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Always good to get a perspective Sorry. from you. That was a view coming in from Prabhu Das Leeladhar.